Hi, this is Cindy from Vintage to New with another video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make this little pair of leggings and I'm going to show you how to do it on a regular sewing machine. The construction part would be exactly the same. The steps on how you sew it if you use a serger and a serger is much quicker and so um, if you have a serger you already know how to set it up and do that but I wanted to show you how you could work on this knit fabric using a regular sewing machine. So what you're going to need to have is your front cut out two pieces, your back cut out two pieces, a piece of waist elastic, and I'm going to show you how to put a really fun little trim. It's an elastic trim on it. This is not necessary, but I just thought it would be fun to do today. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a mark on the piece that's the back. Um, patterns like this, the front and the back look really similar but there's actually a big difference between the back and the front and so it's really important to keep track of which one's the back. So let's get started. The first thing I wanted to talk about is you need to have, when you're sewing on knits, you need to have what they call a ballpoint needle or one that's made specifically for sewing on knit. The next thing we're going to talk about is using a stretch stitch. Check your manual um, and chances are your sewing machine has a stretch stitch as an option. The one I'm going to use today makes a zigzag that goes like this and so when you pull on it and stretch it, like when you're pulling the pants on and off, um, the threads are not going to break. So that's the one I'm going to use but check your manual to see which one you have available. The first thing we're going to do is sew the center back and center front seams. Okay, this is the center back, the one that I had marked, and just for safety's sake, I like to do two rows of stitching really close to each other to give that back just that little extra um, bit of security. Um, your back seam is the one that takes the most pressure when you're bending over and that kind of stuff. So for the little um, 3, 6, 12 month, <clears throat> it's probably not that big a deal, but when you get up a little older, a little safety in the back seam never hurts. Okay, the last thing I did is I trimmed the seam down just a little bit and then I did a zigzag stitch over the edge to kind of overcast that edge to keep it nice and neat. So this is the back, we'll repeat it on the center front, um, but I won't do the double stitching on the center front. Okay, so here they are and you can see that this is the side seam, so we have our back and our front, this is the side, so we're going to take, <clears throat> putting right sides together, we're going to match the side seams <clears throat> like so and then we're going to sew all along the side seam using our stretch stitch. Okay, you can see I've sewn the side seams, then I trimmed them down to about a quarter inch and then I, um, I zigzagged overcast over the side. So here's what we have so far. So um, our crotch seam and inner leg is still open. Now we're going to put the hem in the bottom of the leg and I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do that. Today we're going to look at using a double needle. This is what they look like. Um, there's two needles down here at the bottom. There's one single top which is like any other needle. There's a flat spot in the back which in my machine goes to the back when you put it in just like my regular needles. These double needles come in different widths, the spacing between the two needles. This is a middle middle um, width. Some of them are extremely narrow, some of them are extremely wide. You want the middle. Okay, I have inserted it into my machine and the tricky part to using a double needle is you have to use two different spools of thread. So you will need to check your um, instruction manual to see how to do that on your machine. Personally, I use um, the big cone threads on the stands and I just have two of those going at the same time and I realize not everybody does that. So check your machine and see how you can attach two spools of thread onto your machine. <clears throat> now, you, you go ahead and you thread your machine like you always do exactly with one thread and then you just follow the same track with the other thread then when you come down you thread one thread in each needle. 
Okay, I've turned up the hem at the bottom of the pant leg one inch. I've put the pins on the top side because when you're working with a double needle, you have to sew on the top side. So you're going to be feeling basically where, where that edge is back here and then you're going to sew right along that edge. Let me show you what that looks like. So here it is in my machine and I can feel that the edge is right right there. You can kind of see that little bump and dip right there. So I'm just going to sew along right there. Kind of give it a little help over that big bump. And just make sure you're still going right along the edge. And sew right off the edge. The stitch that a double needle gives you it gives you that really nice parallel stitch. On the inside, it gives you a stitch that looks something like this. It kind of knits it together and it gives it a good stretch. So that's what double needle uh, stitching looks like and it makes great hems. Today I wanted to use this little cute trim that I found. It's got elastic in the middle and then this cute shiny little fabric on the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it right over my um, <clears throat> double stitching just because I wanted to do something cute. So let your imagination go wild on the kind of trims and fun things that you could put on your little pants. So here's what that looks like. Um, of course, you could have just used a single needle to sew that in, but I left my double needle in while I sewed it. Okay, the next thing that we do is we put our right sides together, and we're going to sew up the inner seam and around the crotch of the pants. Remember to use your um, stretch stitch. So now we have sewn the inner leg and crotch of the pants. When you are working here at the beginning, remember to um, back tack a couple times to make that a nice strong connection right there. So here are our little leggings so far, and look how cute those little ruffles look. Um, so now what we're going to do is work on the elastic around the top. I cut the elastic to the size on the chart and I, I butted the edges up together and then I did a small zigzag backed up over that zigzag then I did a wider zigzag over that so now this is really securely fas um, fastened together okay so by folding it in half like this I figured out where the center front is so this will be the center back where the seams are and then I mark the center front Okay, I did a pin at the center back and a pin at the center front. You'll notice that the elastic is a little bit smaller than the top of the pants. And now let me show you how we're going to attach this. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zigzag over the top of the pants onto the top of the elastic like that. But I'm going to take it and I'm going to, here's that center front. I'm going to pull it until it's the right size to fit inside that waistband and then I'm going to hold it and keep it pulled tight as I sew along that edge. I'm just zigzagging along. Okay, I'm approaching the center front. And as you can see, I'm still zigzagging along. I've set my zigzag at a pretty large zigzag and I've done it perfectly. So when I get up to here, I don't have any leftover and it's not pulled too tight. Okay, I'm going to pull that center front pin out. Now I'm going to do the same the rest, the rest of the way back to where I started. So you can kind of see what it looks like <clears throat> with that elastic all sewn around the top. Now, um, of course you would use matching thread. So to finish this up, I changed my thread color and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, started in the center back. <clears throat> this is where we attached the elastic before. Working on the inside, we're going to pull it so that it's a little bit tight. And then we're just going to zigzag all of that down in place. We're going to work our way all the way back around to the front, or to where we started. Okay, I'm just about back around to the beginning, and I thought I would show you what it looks like as I end it up. If you notice, you just keep pulling it so that it lays nice and flat while you zigzag it down. And 
here we are, back to the beginning. So this, <clears throat> this is what it looks like on the front. It's a nice little finished seam. It's nice and finished on the inside. Okay. I wanted to talk to you for just a second about what kind of elastic I like to use. There are different kinds of elastic. There's ones that are called braided elastic and ones that are called knit elastic. The knit elastic is just a softer kind of elastic. It's not so um, rubbery. And so I like that for little baby things like this. So anyway, here's this. And now let me show you one last tip. Take just a tiny little bit of like 1 8 inch satin ribbon, make it into a little bow, and then use a lighter to just really quickly melt the ends like that so now it won't fray. And because handmade clothes don't have labels in them, sometimes it's hard to find the back when you're getting dressed. For a little kid, they need something to say, that's the back, and sometimes for a mom who's in a real big hurry in the morning. So I'm gonna sew this on right back here. So here's our finished little pair of leggings or pants, and this is what that little bow looks like in the back. So anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial, and until next time, this is Cindy from Vintage to New.